Hi, and welcome awesome algebra students. I am here with another video about graphing. You've been doing great at graphing all different types of equations. And so now we're actually gonna start graphing given a word problem. And I know that's a dreaded sound, right? Word problem, we all hear a word problem. We're like, ah, I don't wanna do it. And we usually skip over it. But today we're not skipping over it. We are doing it in this video. And you're gonna see that it's actually not that bad that you pretty much know everything you need to know in order to graph from a word problem. So by the end of this, you should be able to get your own word problem, be able to take the pieces out of that word problem, find the different pieces that you need to graph, and then have a graph that represents that word problem. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and move us right into our first example. And I hope you like these examples, right? We tried to make them fun and relevant. So the first one says, Sia is decorating a huge mansion. She decides she will buy three new chandeliers every month to light up each room. Show how many chandeliers she will have over time. So let's look at this, some key parts of information that we need is that she buys three new chandeliers every month, right? So every month she's buying three chandeliers. I'm gonna write some keywords off to the side here. Remember when we were talking about the word slope and we've been talking about that a whole lot. You've heard slope probably a million times. Slope is the same thing as the rate of change. And I'm bringing this up because we like to talk about slope and just call it slope. However, when I say rate of change, that helps us when we're in word problems like this, like this one. So if I were to say, how much is the rate of change in this situation? That's meaning how much is she changing every week, right? From one week to the next week, how much is she changing? You probably can answer that with that information right there, which is awesome. I'm gonna actually save that till the end of this to give you your answers. Let's see if you were correct, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is whenever I see a word problem, I like to build a table because that helps me do my graph. So I'm gonna build a table with an X and a Y and this is going to help me. If I look at my graph here, my x-axis has months. So I know that my x's are the months. My y-axis, if I look here, is chandeliers. And I'm going to put chandelier. I'm going to put that. We know it's going to be chandeliers. Okay, because I don't think I can fit that word there. So months and chandeliers. So let's start building this table just by what we know from this equi from this. Um, word problem. So after zero months, how many chandeliers does Sia have? How much is she starting with at zero? She's starting with zero, right? We have nothing to start with. But after one month, how many chandeliers would Sia have? She's buying three every month, so if she started with zero, she must have bought three, so that means she has three chandeliers. After two months, how many chandeliers would she have? Well, she's buying three more, so we're gonna add three to that, so it would be six. And then after three months, how many would she have? That would be three more, so she would have nine chandeliers. And you could keep going, right? After four months, she would have 12, and you could keep going with this table. I'm gonna stop there just so I don't run out of room, but you could keep going, right? She wouldn't stop buying unless we knew that she ran out of money, um, she ran out of rooms to hang these chandeliers or something happened right to where she would stop, but it would keep going. So I'm going to take this information now. I've used this word problem to write a table and now I'm going to graph it. So if I look down here at months, at month zero, she had zero chandeliers. So I'm going to make my first point there at zero, zero. After one month, if I look at my table, she had three chandeliers. So I'm going to go all the way up to three. And three is right between two and four. So that's where that would be. After two months, she got another three chandeliers. So she's up to six now. You can start to see a pattern here. After three months, she's all the way up at nine, which is between eight and ten. After four months, she went all the way up to 12 chandeliers. After five months, we didn't write this on our table, but let's keep adding. After five months, she would have 15 chandeliers. After six months, she would have 18. Pretty sure you can start to see the pattern now here. 
after eight months, she would have 24, and you could keep going, right? I'm going to go ahead and connect these points with my line to show that trend, right? Sia is buying more chandeliers each week. She is increasing the amount of chandeliers, so it makes sense that it has a positive slope because she's increasing. So now that we look at this, could we know some key pieces of information? Could you know what the slope is by looking at this? couple ways to know it. There's actually three. You could have just looked at this word problem and knew what the slope was, right? That's what I asked you. How much is she changing each week? What's the rate of change in this word problem? Here, it's buying three every month. So if I look at my table here, or even my graph, how much is it rising and running? I'm going to do a different color here just so we can make sure we don't confuse our graph. I'm at zero, and I'm going to rise up to two, so that's two. She went all the way up to three, and she ran one. So she rose three, right, because one is here, two, three, and she ran one. So my slope is three over one. And you can see that in your table here. Remember, my slope is the change in y. So here's plus three, added three, added three, and added three over the change in x. And my x is changing by adding one every time. So you could have found the slope from your table that you created, or you could have found it from your graph, right? She rise three, she ran one, or she change in y over change in x. So my slope is definitely three over one. Now there's one other thing that I want you to be able to point out in this situation, and it is our B or our Y intercept. B stands for Y intercept. So remember that our B is where we begin. And we've been saying that when we've been graphing, right? B is where we begin. Where did Sia begin in this whole situation, right? How many did it say in this word problem? How many she started with? We did that here on our table. She started with zero. And if you look at your graph here, this y axis right here, where it intercepts is at zero. That's its beginning point. So yes, the y intercept is B and it is zero. Now, I can almost bet that most of you are already ahead of the game and you could take these two pieces of information and write an equation in y equals mx plus b format, right? If I gave you these two pieces of information, could you just copy that to a formula? I think so. That's what we're doing next unit. So if you got that, you are ahead of the ball game. My m is 3 over 1x plus my b, which is zero. If you could write this equation out already too, that is fantastic. You are ahead of the game, okay? So a couple pieces of information there. You took that real world situation, you made a table, you graphed it, you determined some of the key features, right? Like slope and it's y-intercept. So now let's look at this second one down here at the bottom. It says Sia is decorating a huge mansion. Okay, kind of similar. She decides she will buy three new chandeliers every month. Okay, that hasn't changed. Three new every month to light up each room. Oh, she already has five chandeliers. That's different. Show how many chandeliers she will have over time. Okay, now before I do this one, I want you to pause for about two seconds, and I want you to make a prediction. So we know that this three chandeliers every month is the same as what it was up here but this already has five chandeliers is different. I want you to make a prediction. How is that right here, this difference, going to change what our table looks like? How's it gonna change what our graph looks like? And how's it gonna change what our equation looks like? Okay, I'll say that one more time. How is this, by already having five chandeliers, how is that going to change or affect our table and our graph and our equation here? How's it gonna change it? Make that prediction. Get it in your mind, stick it there, right? Like on a sticky note, right in your mind. We're gonna come back to that in just a second to see if your prediction was correct. Okay, I'm gonna go through the process of this one again. I'm gonna build my table, my X's and my Y's. I know that X's are the months, and I know that Y's are the chandeliers. 
Again, I'm going to shorten that, right? It's chandeliers. So let's talk about this. At zero months, how many chandeliers does Sia have? Think about it carefully. Is she starting off at zero this time? That was that key difference, right? She's starting off at five. After one month, how many chandeliers would Sia have? Well, she's still buying three each month, so she started with five and she got three more. That must mean that now she has eight. I don't know what she's doing with eight chandeliers, but she has eight chandeliers. After two months, she bought three more. So how many would that be? Eleven. After three months, she bought three more. Be at fourteen. And it would keep going, right? After four months, three more. 17, right, it would keep going up. So let's look at that table. How did that already starting with five change our table? Look at this point right here. Remember this initial is our B or our beginning point. That's where we begin. So that is my B. So if this one is my beginning or my B, B is Y intercept. Our B is different here. We are beginning at five. We're not beginning at zero. We're beginning at five. Is my M or my slope still the same here? Is it still changing by three every month? It is, and you should see that in your table also, that it's changing by three. Right? It's changing by three every time, and in the X's it was changing by one. So it would be change in Y over change in X. So it would be three over one. Again, my slope is still three over one. It's changing three each, each month. So now I could take that information, right? I could take these two pieces of information and I could write Y equals M is three over one, X plus my B now is five. Look at how those equations are different. They're pretty similar, but a little bit different. And then I'm gonna finally graph this, right? I kinda saved that for last. If we are beginning with five chandeliers at zero months, she began at five. So she began all the way up here at five. After one month, she bought three more, so that puts her all the way at eight. And we did that here in our table too. After two months, she bought three more, so that puts her at 11. After three months, that puts her at 14. After four months, that puts her at 17. After five months, that puts her at, let me count, 20. After six months, that put her at 23. And at seven months, that puts her at 26. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect these. Okay, it makes that linear function, it's increasing. She's buying more and more chandeliers there. So let's talk about these graphs. Do you remember that prediction that you put a sticky note on there right there in your head? My question to you when you made that prediction was, how does already starting with five chandeliers going to change our table? How is starting with five chandeliers going to change our graph? And how is starting with five going to change our equation? So let's talk about that. Let's take a second. It changed our table because our beginning point started at zero up here when she started with zero chandeliers, and now she's starting with five chandeliers, so now our beginning point is at five. And that is shown here in our graph. If you look at your beginning point right here, it's at five. If you look at your beginning point here, it's at zero. So both of these lines have the same slope, right? They're increasing by three every time, so they're both going up the same amount, but the one at the bottom started higher, right? So she started with a little bit more, but she's still buying the same amount every month. And then our equation, our slope stayed the same, right? Our rate of change that she's buying every month stayed the same. The only thing was different was that beginning right here, that B was at zero and now it's at five. Okay, so I kind of asked you to get ahead of the game by writing those equations, but it really connects well when you are graphing these. So I hope that now 
And you can see how we took those word problems. We built a table that makes sense to us, and then we use that table to help us graph it. We're going to do one more example question together. Before that, I think I have a question here built in for us. I think it's going to pop up. It's a little hard to read here, so let me read it to you. There's a question right here in yellow that I'm going to read out loud to us so we can talk about it. It says, describe how the corresponding graphs are similar in A and B. And then it says, describe how this, how they changed when the stories changed. So that's exactly what we were saying, right? They are similar because they still have the same slope. They're still increasing by the same amount every time. What's different about when the stories changed is now they have a different y-intercept, right? A different beginning point. We started at five instead of zero. Okay, quick little wrap-up questions there. We were talking about those already. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this and put us on to our last example. So we're going to go through this one just like we did. It says, Drake is climbing Mount Everest. He started from the bottom and took three hours to climb one kilometer in elevation. That sounds important. Three hours to climb one kilometer. Show his elevation over time if he keeps climbing. So again, I'm going to make a table because tables are our friends, guys. When we have word problems, these tables help us make so much sense of these word problems. My x-axis down here is hours. I'm going to put HRS for hours. My y-axis right here is elevation in kilometers. I'm going to put KM for kilometers. Remember, kilometers is just a measurement, right? We usually say miles. Some other countries say kilometers. It's a distance of measurement, okay? So let's talk about this. Read this question again. Drake is climbing Mount Everest. He started from the bottom and took three hours to climb one kilometer. So let's talk about this. Hours. At zero hours, how many kilometers did Drake climb? Nothing, right? He started at the bottom. He didn't climb anything. He's at zero. Now let's talk about this. After one hour, do we know how many kilometers he would have climbed in one hour? It says it took three hours to climb one kilometer. So I don't know how much he did in one hour. I'm going to erase that one and I'm gonna actually count by a different measurement here because now I know after three hours, he climbed one kilometer. I don't know how many climbed after four hours or five hours, but I do know after six hours, he must have climbed two kilometers because every three hours, he's doing one more kilometer. So every three hours, it's one more. So another three hours passes, he climbed another kilometer. Another three hours passes and he climbs one more kilometer. You can see that pattern start to go. I'm gonna use that table to graph it, right? Tables are our friends, so let's graph it. Zero hours, zero kilometers. Zero hours, zero kilometers. In three hours, it was one kilometer. So I'm gonna go to three hours, one kilometer. In six hours, it was two kilometers. So six hours, two kilometers. In nine hours, it was three kilometers. And then I would run off the graph. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect these points. So look at that, Drake is climbing, he's increasing. So it's a positive slope. Could we tell the slope just by looking at this graph? Absolutely. How many from this point to this point do we rise? We rise one and we run one, two, three. So if I do my slope as rise over run, he rised one and he ran three. So let's look at that slope. And same thing here, change in y is adding one, change in y is adding one, change in y is adding one, change in y is adding one over, right, in our, in our equation it would be over x and x is we're adding three each time. 
we're adding three each time. So my slope is one over three. So let's look at that equation, could, or this word problem. Could we have gotten that slope just by looking at that word problem? It took three hours to climb one kilometer, right? So one kilometer in three hours. We can tell that from our table or from our table here and from our graph. Our slope was rise over run, so one over three. Our y-intercept or our beginning, our b here, how many beginning did he start with? What was that beginning that he started with? Zero. Right, our b was zero. So again, if you want to be ahead of the ball game and you want to write that equation out, it would be y equals my m x plus my b. There's that equation to put you ahead and already into the next unit. So we got one more here, and it's probably going to look similar to the one above, just like on the last slide. So Drake is climbing Mount Everest. He started from two kilometers up. Oh, that's important, right? That's different. He started from two kilometers up the mountain and took three hours to climb one kilometer in elevation. Show his elevation over time if he keeps climbing. So I'm going to make my table over here, x's and y's. My x's are the hours, my y's are the kilometers. And let's just talk about that again, right? Taking it from this word problem into a table. At zero hours, how much would Drake have climbed? Is he starting at zero again? Did he start from the bottom this time? Drake's not at the bottom this time, right? He started from two kilometers up the mountain. So he is starting at two kilometers up already. So after one hour now, do we know how much he climbed? Again, just like up here, it took three hours to climb that one kilometer. So I'm not gonna count by ones in my hours. I'm gonna count by threes because it takes three hours to climb it. So three hours, he climbed one more kilometer. So one more than that will put him at three, right? Because I added one here. Another three hours passes, so that's six hours, and he would have climbed one more kilometer, so that puts him at four. Another three hours pass, that puts him at nine hours, and he would have only climbed one more kilometer, which is five. All right, he's going up by ones, and here he's going up every three hours. He is climbing every three hours. He is climbing one kilometer. So we have our table here. I'm going to go ahead and graph it. At zero hours, he started at two kilometers. After three hours, he was at three kilometers. At six hours, he was at four kilometers. At nine hours, he was at five kilometers. Oop, I graphed that a little bit off. There we go, five kilometers. I'm going to connect those. Now look at these graphs. What's different about them? What's different? What's the same? Let's find the slope here. Remember my slope is our rise over our run. And if you don't remember, when I'm talking about this change over y, change over x, this was also an equation for slope. Change in y over change in x. That was also a formula for slope. It's the same thing as rise over run. Okay, so my rise is we rose up one and we had to run one, two, three. So rise one, run three. Same thing, change in y was one, change in x was three. You get the same thing, one over three, right? That is my slope. But this time, our B, or our beginning, was not at zero like that first one, right? He didn't start at the bottom. He start two kilometers up. So my beginning here is two, and you can see that in your table here, that your beginning point was at two. Again, you can be ahead of the game and write that equation out. Y equals my M, X, plus my B. Look at that, how that equation changed. 
Remember our y-intercept or our beginning change. So look at how that changed our equation, right? Our slopes are still the same. So that means that both of these lines are going up at the same rate of change, right? They're both increasing at the same. However, one just started ahead of the other. It started higher than the other. Again, I believe there's going to be a question that pops up here that we can talk about. Let's see if we've already talked about it and covered it. It says the y-intercept is sometimes called the initial value. Why do you think this, why do you think it is called that? Use a couple of graphs in your response to support your thinking. So it's saying that the y-intercept, so this point right here where it intercepts the y, is sometimes called the initial value. Well, why is it initial? What's special there? What did we do there? I would say that at this point, that's where we began, right? And initial means the beginning, right? We like to say B is the beginning. Well, B is the initial. That's where we start. In this problem, we started at zero. In this problem, we started at two. That's why it's our initial point. So we went through four different word problems there. Believe it or not, remember word problems, we all kind of get scared of them. But we just did four of them together. Okay, I don't want you to be afraid of word problems. Just make a table every time and think about that real world situation, okay? Sometimes the tables help us and they help us make sense. Sometimes people just wanna go straight into the graph, which is perfect. Some people are already gonna read that scenario and write the equation from it. Either way is fine. If I were you, I'd start with the table and make sure that all of them are correct. My table matches my graph, my graph matches my equation, and everything matches. Okay, it has been great talking about word problems with you. As you can probably hear for the past couple minutes now, my dog probably really wants to go outside. So I'm going to check on him. If you ever need help graphing, please remember to reach out to your teachers. We are here and we are more than happy to help.